kiosk and go queuing up to speak to them. Confessing to Newsnight, there are conversations about working with the Tories in government. Have you had any conversations with Conservatives not currently in UKIP about working with them after the election? Not really. Not really? Any, not really. Any, that not doesn't really. mean, that doesn't mean really. none not, at all? Not formally, no. Informally? <laughs> Informally, in politics, you know, round the corner, in the places that politicians frequent, these, these sort of conversations well, happen all the time. But, uh, but no, look, we are committed. We are committed to pushing, to using whatever influence we have in Parliament to get a referendum. With the, uh, the, the UKIP circus, a gift a... for those with a more sedate way of capturing the campaign. It's like a kind of amorphic mass that moves <laughs> on its own and <laughs> thinks as one organism. Really poorly, she got maggots in every orifice. I wonder how many votes there are in um, hedgehog welfare. But Nick Clegg sought safer haven in a hedgehog sanctuary in Solihull, swearing his plucky party, in his words, will cling on in more places than polls suggest. What's exciting for us, which is why I'm delighted the campaign has finally started, means that I can get out of uh, uh, offices in Whitehall and actually tell our side of the story, because where we tell that side of the story and people listen to it, we regain and hold on to people's support. Thank you very much. Tonight, David Cameron's party had to admit its claim Labour would hit families with £3,000 of tax was a guess. And while political promises can cost, campaigns need hard cash. Newsnight's been told the Tories will spend right up to the campaign limit, around 18 million. While we've learned some Labour members have been told to try to hold back from spending in case there's another election later this year. That's denied by the party. Yet neither can be confident they'll do enough to stop that happening, to capture a number 10 with any kind of security. Who will we choose to rule us and who will get the cat? Laura there, day one. Lots of issues have come up, tax and borrowing and attitudes to business. I'm joined by Conservative Party chairman, Grant Chaps. Good evening to evening. you. Um, now, you made a claim today that under Labour, taxes for the average working family would go up by £3,028. That claim has been pretty thoroughly demolished. Are you still holding it or, you, or not? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, look, the claim is very straightforward. Labour walked through the division lobbies and they voted for £30 billion of consolidation. That means to reduce spending by £30 billion or having to raise taxes. Now, we've said we'll do that by reducing expenditure, £13 billion off the departments, £12 billion from welfare and £5 billion from uh, getting rid of aggressive tax avoidance schemes. So we've explained how we're going to do it. Labour, on the other hand, have said we'll do it through partially through tax rises. Ed Miliband suggested before 50-50. Uh, the tax rise message has been repeated by Ed Miliband, by Ed Balls, by Harriet Harman this year. So if they are going to do half of that 30 billion, that's 15 billion through tax rises, and they perhaps are going to apply that to the families who are working in this country, £3,028 right. over this part. Why then have you accumulated the tax rise? We'd normally express this as an annual form, and we'd normally express it per household. You've expressed it per working household. Obviously, that makes it a higher number because it's for a smaller number of households. So the IFS said, if you believe the 15 billion that you've just talked about, which they don't, um, it would actually be 560 pounds would be the normal way of expressing it. Um, but they don't believe the 15 billion. They think it would more plausibly be 3 billion because the charter for budget renewal, the fiscal responsibility will be updated in a few months time. And that will give them a great deal more wiggle room on current figures. But first things first, um, the charter itself um, is something that has already been voted on. In other words, the mm -hmm. £30 billion pounds of consolidation. So Labour walked through those lobbies and they said, yes, we want to, we, we're voting for £30 billion of consolidation. So you can't now say, well, actually, that's not what they meant. That is actually what they voted for. And then secondly, think of it this way. This is the first parliament which has sat for the full five years we've just had. We know the next date of the election. I know the next one's not for 37 days, <laughs> but the one after, <laughs> I can reveal, is the 7th of May, 2020. So we know the date of that election. Unlike in pre previous cycles, we can confidently talk about a five-year process. And I'll just leave you this thought as well. When Labour, for example, talk about building more homes, they always talk about that over the length of the Parliament. In fact, they recently right. did an announcement on that basis. So you're benchmarking this so cumulative nonsense. You, yes, so why, it is why nonsense. Look, Grant, Grant Chaps, everybody knows as a way of expressing a tax rise, accumulating five years is... is, is, is well, well, I'm not really sense. sure why you're saying well, that, because, because that's how much more people are going to pay over five years. Everybody respectable does it. 
per year so you can make a judgment so, about how so, much... So answer going me this, why would that be uh, an odd thing to do? But, for example, when Labour announced their housing figures, uh, that to be cumulated over well, five I'll tell years. you why we don't. It's because when you talk about your welfare cuts, you call it 12 billion. We don't call it 60 billion, even though it's going to apply over five years. If we talk about your 12 billion of welfare cuts, that's 80% of the, the 15 billion that you're talking about of tax increase. So but, you've got to find £2,400 for every working household in the country if you want to use these ridiculous ways of calculating I, I, I just don't, I just it, don't, none of us want to do. Well, I just don't buy your argument because people <laughs> are going to go to the polls in 36, 37 days' time. And they're going to say, look, if I vote for Ed Miliband, what am I going to get? And the answer, apart from chaos, is, well, over the lifetime of the next parliament, let's be clear, over the lifetime of the next parliament, you will pay more than £3,000 if you're a working family because Ed Miliband himself has said half of that £30 billion consolidation that he has voted for with his party will have to come out of right. tax so rises. Look, and so this is all pretty clear, right. and I think people need to know right. about that when We've they go to the We've got a problem here. Is you say 3,000, the IFS come up with a figure more like £100 per, per household, being more trying to work out what Labour say. There are huge gaps in what Labour's policy is because they haven't told us. But assuming you can work out what it is, they think it's probably closer to £100 than £3,000. Well, I, I just... Who do you think the public... Who do you think the public should believe? Well, look... Do you think they should believe you... Or do you think they should believe the fiscal independent fiscal experts don't, of the Institute don't, for Don't take it studies? from me or them. Take it from the Labour Party. Because the other month, they walked through the lobbies and they voted for £30 billion of consolidation over the next is two this, years. If they, if they do that, said they that can't... Already. Is this how you're going to fight on. the rest of the campaign? This is, it is obviously ridiculous, this figure. The, the IFS are quite sensible. They're quite independent. They wouldn't say much lower figure if it wasn't a better figure to use. They don't say that because they know that this figure is ridiculous. No, I, is, is it going to be... Ca How are the public going to make their minds up during this campaign? Well, look, if there's I, this I, slaying I, I around of figures... You're not expressing your welfare cuts. You're not telling us what they are. You're certainly not accumulating them over five years and expressing them per working household, which you could do, but we're not doing that. You're being very selective. And it's just making it very hard for anybody, isn't it? to make up their mind in this campaign. I don't agree at all. Look, uh, Labour cannot vote for one thing and then in the next breath say, oh, oh, actually, we didn't mean to vote for that. In fact, we don't think we need to cut or consolidate by that amount. That is what you're proposing that they should be allowed right. to sort of guess away we're doing. I think it's very important when people go to the polls on 7th of May, they know that there's a clear plan, David Cameron, which will say that we will not impose tax rises on hardworking families as opposed to the chaos of Ed Miliband, presumably propped Message up by clear. Alex Salmond and the SNP, which will say, oh, well, actually, uh, we will, and he's the one who said it, raise half this money through tax, in which case people should know how much tax okay. that involves. And the fact that we've tossed it up over the length of the Parliament right. is clear to see. We said it in let's the not, document let's not, we published today. Please, let's not, let's not go on about it. I think we're just going to confuse people. Look, let's talk about business now. Labour launched their uh, business manifesto today, spelling out their approach. They've made it fairly clear. They're willing to draw a distinction between enterprising activities, productive activities, other activities they think business does that isn't so useful, socially useful. Do you think that's a useful distinction? Not especially. And I, I think Ed Miliband has spent the last four and a half, five years bashing the hell out of business. And then today, on the first day of the election campaign, as if by some conversion, he gathers a group of business people together and tells you that he's all on the side of uh, business. And, of course, what happened then within hours is the whole thing backfired. You had major business leaders from Siemens, from Kellogg's and others saying, well, hold on a minute. Yes, we may have talked about our, uh, our, our, uh, our, our particular views on issues like Europe, but we certainly didn't mean that to appear I mean, on the page of the FT there's a serious, with Vote Labour there's at a, the bottom of that advert. There's and a that's fairly of course serious, what's happened there is a fairly serious issue, and I wonder whether it divides you or not, and it's whether you basically take the view that business, all business is good or whether you take the view, as Ed Miliband clearly does, that some business is good and some isn't good. Well, look, I, I don't think it, uh, government, apart from passing laws to say what is lawful, is in the business of um, deciding which businesses are, are good and which businesses are bad. What government should be doing is making the environment for business a good one. For example, we have cut the jobs tax. That enabled businesses in this country to hire way more okay. people. So, to give you an example of that, in practical terms, you know, 1.9 million more Jobs. Well, that is a lot of jobs in the economy, we, and it's really worth. Can we well. look at your business record as, a, as a, an illustration of the point that Ed Miliband was trying to make? Okay, so you've been a businessman. You've run a printing business. I think everyone would agree that's a productive business, isn't it? It does something. It out 
Then you had another business under the name Michael Green or S Sebastian Fox. It sold many products, but as, as I understand it, among the products it sold, and I'm not an expert in this, it was something called scraping and spinning. So you produce multiple websites, all virtually the same. They're all rubbish, really, but you're trying to get ads on them all. Now, would that, would you say that was socially productive, well, like the for, printing for, business? First, first of all, um, I'm very proud to have had a, a background in business yeah. where I've created a, a business 24 years old now, the um, printing business that still runs uh, without me, probably better. Um, but it's something which is an experience that I think has been useful for me in Parliament and also as a, as, as a minister. The other one. What about um, the other one? Yeah, and look, I mean, the, the, there's, a, there's a business which produced a lot of different um, products, including some very dull Unracy ones, or some cool things product like uh, the Money Tree Challenge. Uh, th $30,000 some... in 30 days. Is that a productive business or uh, is that a predatory we'll, we'll business? We'll leave Ed Miliband to make judgments on what's productive or not. But I'll say this. There's what's very your dull... judgment? Is that productive or let, not? Let me say this. There's some very dull sounding products like how to write a corporate email policy and how to make a presentation. And many of them weren't that exciting. Just let me it's a, it's a let me just quote from one of them. It's a publishing bit. In just two and a half minutes time, you can own the 24 proven power keys guaranteed to sell any product or service on the net. These, these power keys work no matter what it is you're trying to sell online. Now, is that a productive kind of power a... key or is that a predatory power key? If you can sell anything, rubbish or not, is it a good thing or a bad thing? I'm just trying to get whether your business, we should take your business, your Michael Green business, as something the Conservative Party would feel well, represents look, their business ethos or not. Well, look, it was a publishing business and it published many different products, some which were fairly dull, some which you know, had exciting titles and were marketing businesses. The point is this. We are being told by a man, Ed Miliband, who, frankly, has never done anything else in his life other than be a professional politician, uh, that uh, businesses can be separated into different categories. And look, many your people... businesses but, seem but to make on. that point, don't hold they? On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you not see a distinction between your printing business and another business that just hold, hold, hold on get rich quickly? So, 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 surely, and I'm so, wondering which one is the one that represents the true Tory party well, business value, or do you not draw any distinction look, between them? surely. The issue is this. Uh, you know, uh, any business which is uh, doing something which is perfectly legal, including a marketing um, business, Definitely basically legal, exporting yeah. to, the, to the States, uh, is able to um, sell its um, products. Now, I don't accept the idea that people who have business experience, people who have knowledge of employing people, people who've uh, built something uh, from um, scratch, uh, are the enemy in this country. And I think one of the difficulties... No, one of the, are one, people who one sell rubbish problems. on the internet or clutter it up with stupid pages designed to get clicks by distracting other people from real sites that have put people... Put well, there are many... There is that, are, just is that be, a good or not just a good be, thing? Like, you've been very reticent. You keep coming back to Ed Miliband, and I'm trying to ask whether you think... Well, because... You're, are you embarrassed about that business? You know, we've all done things in the past that we're ashamed no, of. Not, you, do you feel proud of that business, the I'm, Michael Green one, or do you feel embarrassed I'm about proud it? to have a background of business. I'll tell are you, you what... Are you proud of that business, though, if you let me, If you let me finish yeah, well, the sentence you will here. answer it, yeah. uh, I, I'm, Proud to have been in business, and that particular business was a publishing business, sold many different products, many of which we're not highlighting here because they were very no, dull, no, boring corporate um, subjects. It certainly had some racier titles, and you've, you've illustrated them. But look, I think the experience of business in this country over the last few years, which has been about being able to build employment, create a country, mm. which doesn't happen by accident. No, let me just finish this point. It doesn't happen no, by accident. Doesn't. When you end up with an economy which is the fastest growing in the developed world, employing more people with more jobs, would, would you, that doesn't happen by mistake. Would you recommend and you don't a young do unemployed by person? Would you recommend on a young unemployed person to go into that kind of business, the sort of internet marketing business? You well, well, so by the way, the, as I mentioned, the business published an awful lot of uh, books. There are many people who publish uh, uh, books, a lot of products, products on online, and uh, you know, by the way, exporting for this country as well. So you can make a big fuss of it. The point of this I'm, is, I'm, I don't being very think reticent to, to, to judge it. I mean, you're, you're, let me just ask one very quick question. You're marketing the Conservative Party now. You've been marketing internet products. We won't go into any more detail about well, I don't want to get into trouble with timetables. Right, it was a long right, time right, ago. It was a long well. time ago. When you market the Conservative Party, do you do it with the same integrity that you were marketing those products in the past? Look, I think the simple or fact is that the, the record of this government absolutely speaks for itself. We came into power when this country was as bust as Greece. Five years later, Greece is still bust. We have record levels of people in work, record levels of women in work. We have the highest growth so in, not, in Europe. So you're not willing to draw so, no, what the I'm, connection between the integrity uh, you used it, then and now? Look, the, the fact of the matter is, with this government and the way that we have managed this economy, we have the credibility to say, another five years, the clear competence of a David Cameron-led government, hold on, rather than the chaos of Ed Miliband Got propped up by Alex Salmon. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Grant Shapps.
Now, in a few minutes, we're going to give you the latest Newsnight Index, which is our forecast of the election result, put together by experts, not by us. Uh, but you don't need me to tell you that it's all looking pretty close. So let's uh, hear from Allegra now with her take on where the parties are and what they aim to do in this campaign. The big parties accept there's a stalemate in the opinion polls. Labour and Tory camps both believe their breakthrough may not come until late in their campaigns. What will those campaigns look like? So what do you need to know? Well, let's start with the Conservatives. They are defending some 100 swing or marginal seats, but they also need to be winning about 21 seats if they're to be in with a chance of a majority. Very few people now expect that. Their strategy rests on the health of the economy, so you're going to hear a lot of this.